Hey there, I'm so glad to see you here because in today's video, I wanted to talk about something that is super important, especially during these crazy times and that's self-care. I know, I know you must have heard about the importance of self-care a million times, but have you actually taken the time to check in with yourself lately, to really see how you feel, to be aware of what you need? You might be stuck in a mode of doing something because you feel like you have to get as much done as possible, especially nowadays where everyone's make you feel like you need to be productive. Or maybe you have so much to do because you have to work from home and also homeschool your children at the same time. So you're like all over the place. So you might not only be worried about the whole life situation, but also feel anxious and stressed. Or you might feel like you're in a rut and nothing really excites you anymore. And you're wondering, what else you can do besides watching Netflix all the time? First of all, it's okay to feel stressed, anxious, or lost, or any type of feelings. We all go through that and all these things make us human. The important thing is to be aware of how you actually feel without trying to ignore it and really practicing self-compassion. Don't beat yourself up for feeling the way you feel. It's okay. If you know how you feel, it's a lot easier to find different ways how you can get through it. And one of the things that is super important is to have a protocol in place. Meaning whenever you feel a certain way, for example, stressed, anxious, or uninspired, what are your go-to things you do to help you deal with all that? There are many different circumstances why we feel stressed and even though we usually can't change our circumstances, we can decide on how we want to think, feel and act despite all of that. So if you have a go-to list with things that you can do and choose from, you can decide on which activity would help you the most in a certain situation. And this list isn't a list of things that you should be doing, it's rather something you're willing to do for yourself because your mental health and how you feel is your priority and you want to make it a habit to regularly take care of yourself so you can be the best version of yourself. And in this video, I wanted to give you some ideas that you can add to your list and that will hopefully help you as well. Let's start with something super essential that we always forget about. And the first idea is to do something that brings you joy using all your senses, such as sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. They all will help you center yourself and focus more on the present moment, which will make you feel more calm and relaxed. Our minds can get caught up with thinking about the past or worry about the future. And one of the essentials is simply breathing. We sometimes forget to actually breathe properly and to pay attention to how we breathe. So we feel super anxious and very stressed. Deep breaths, for example, help you to slow the heartbeat and to lower stress. And also your thoughts get so much more clear. So doing things like opening your window regularly to actually breathe in the fresh air makes a huge, huge difference. In one of the episodes of Scrubs, they actually mentioned how when you take deep breaths multiple times, it feels like everything slows down and you feel calmer and more centered, which ultimately helps you to deal with different situations a lot better. Have you seen this episode? I think it's so true and I keep this in mind all the time. You can also burn a scented candle, listen to your favorite music that you might have forgotten about. These are such little things, but we often forget about them. We think we need something completely groundbreaking that will change everything. But in reality, all these little things aren't that little either because at the end of the day, they all bring us joy and make us happy. I also like to surround myself with things that already bring me a lot of joy just by simply looking at them, such as art or plants around my home. Taking care of your plants can be one of the ways to distress. So why not finding some low maintenance plants that you can nurture and watch grow? And it's actually so cool to see how they grow over time. And just feeling like you're surrounded by nature in your own home can make such a huge difference. And one of my favorites is to pamper myself in the morning and evenings because it brings me so much joy through all my senses as well. Because doing my makeup and enjoying the soothing blending of the eyeshadows is just so much fun. It's kind of like doing something fun and creative in the morning. From applying different products to my face, body and hair to wearing something that 
just a nice and comfortable fabric, makes me feel more centered, awake, calm, and just prepared for the day. Especially now when we spend so much time at home, it's so easy to stay in your pajamas and don't even brush your hair. And by making an actual effort for yourself so that you can feel great and ready for the day can make such a huge difference in the way you feel. The second category and idea to take care of yourself is to do something fun. And you might be thinking like, duh, but so many people don't make actual time to do something fun in their life. Because you know, it's so easy to get caught up in getting things done, taking care of 5 million things that time for fun activities and self-care is the last thing on the list. And I've been there until I was completely burned out because I was only working. And if you're tired of watching Netflix all the time as your activity to unwind, why don't you try something where you actively do something fun and try a new activity such as making art. For me, watercolor painting is the most therapeutic medium ever. It's so relaxing to watch the paint move and mix together while creating something with your own hands. And it doesn't have to be something super, super complicated. It can be something super simple that allows you to distress and unwind. You can even create your own watercolor coloring pages that you can use as a therapeutic exercise. Actually, many studies show that art therapy is successful at reducing stress and it can also help with symptoms of anxiety and depression. So painting with watercolors allows you to slow down, to switch off your thoughts and really focus just on what you're doing in the moment while adding color to your life. Whether it's drawing, knitting, scrapbooking, journaling, reading or painting, if it's something you enjoy that will distract you from the stress of everyday life for a while, it's important to make time for that. I also love learning and I've taken many, many online courses because for me it's an investment in myself and you learn so, so much in a short period of time that can be life changing. And if you're interested in watercolor painting in particular, I just recently launched my online course about watercolor painting. The enrollment is currently closed, but you can join the waiting list. So you can check out the link in the description box below and sign up and you will be the first to know about when I open the doors again. But not only painting is such a great form of self-care and meditation, but also cooking something because you also create something with your own hands. Plus you get to eat what you just cooked, right? For me, whenever I feel like I'm in a rut, eating something delicious that is also completely new to me or something that I haven't eaten in a while shakes things up as well. It literally sparks joy and new energy because again, you're taking care of yourself through your senses, which in this case is your taste. The third category and idea, which is also an important way to take care of yourself is to get rid of something that mentally makes you feel cluttered and stuck. I've used to be this person that would say, my room is messy because I'm a creative person. I need my mess and things like that. But the older I got, the more I realized it's all nonsense. I was simply lazy and I tried to find excuses for that. And the more messy my room got, the more stressed and anxious I felt. So once I realized how great I feel not having all this clutter around me, I felt so much more in charge of my life. Not only my place was clutter free, but also my mind. I knew exactly where everything is. It was organized and calm and I wouldn't have to constantly think about all the things I need to get rid of or tidy up and just feel stressed. So for me, cleaning or just tidying up is a form of self-care and meditation really. Maybe I'm just getting old, but it really helps a lot. So do you have any piles of papers, junk drawers or something else that you might have avoided over the past couple of months or even years? Make a list of things that you want to tackle and then just take action. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And once you've cleared something up, you can check off your list. This won't only make you feel calmer and less stressed, but it will also boost your self-esteem because it will feel like you finally get your life back on track. And I think especially now, it's so important to make sure that our mind and our surroundings don't get out of control. The fourth category of self-care is to reconnect with what's important to you. Because sometimes we can get caught up with worrying about something or thinking about things we should be doing while those things might not even be 
not, might not even be worth stressing about because they're not important. And I've noticed whenever I slip into the mindsets that don't really serve me, it's usually because I stopped watching and reading inspiring things and I end up being surrounded by all the noise that makes me feel stuck and anxious. So instead of browsing news or Instagram and getting upset about things, the first thing I do in the morning when I drink my coffee is I read or watch something inspiring and this sets me in the right track. I've linked different YouTube videos and books and people in the description box below that really helped me in the past, so I really hope they will also help you. The fifth category, and this is something that is often overlooked, and it's moving your body. It doesn't mean you have to work out, it can be as simple as dancing and stretching. You might have heard this before, but when you move your body, your body releases certain chemicals in your brain that really make you feel happy. And But also at the same time, the movement helps your brain to get rid of chemicals that make you feel stressed and anxious. And have you noticed that it's pretty difficult to feel stressed when you move your body? The sixth and last category is to connect with other people. Especially nowadays when we are so isolated, it's important to actually connect with other people. You can call someone, do a video chat and just chat and laugh with your friends. There are a lot of free tools that you can use, for example, Hangout, Zoom, or just your inbuilt apps in your phone. You can also dedicate certain days and times where you meet your friends or family members to just chat and hang out. I mean, we're social creatures, even if someone of us are super introverted or shy. At the end of the day, social connection is essential to nearly every aspect of health and well-being. And it's the perfect time to get out of our own way and to reach out to people who will be so happy to hear from us. Let me know in the comments what tips and ideas will you add to your go-to list of self-care activities and what are the things that you have been already doing that was super helpful to you? Let us help each other out. I really hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.